Up next, it's the Soundcheck Podcast. Please hold. Your ears are very important to us. Please hold on and our program will begin shortly. The Soundcheck Podcast is coming up. Please continue to hold. up with the Soundcheck podcast and everything that's happening in the New Sounds empire, just go to newsounds.org and follow us on social media. All of the icons are in the top right corner of the page. All of our other musicians are currently playing for other customers. Please stay with us, and someone will play for you in just a moment. From NewSounds.org, welcome to another edition of the Soundcheck Podcast Series, a set of live in-studio performances streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. I'm John Schaefer. The Ecuadorian-American singer and songwriter Roberto Lang has been making records for 10 years now under the name Elado Negro, Spanish for black ice cream. His music is a mix of Spanish and English, acoustic and electronic, art and and pop. His most recent album is called This Is How You Smile, and the band is here to play some songs from it for us today. Beginning with the song called Running, here is Elado Negro Live. One, two, three. Fading true. Wait, wait, actually, we're going to restart that. Here we go. <laughs> Just like you 
The song is called Running. Elado Negro, live here in our New York studio. It uh, appears on the latest album by Elado Negro called This Is How You Smile. And as always, the music uh, written by Roberto Lang, who is the the lead vocalist. You'll hear him playing guitar as well uh, during the course of the set. Roberto, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Yeah. Thanks for having me back. And and uh, the full complement of musicians with you here today, uh, Opal Hoyt playing the synthesizer, the keytar, not to put too fine a point on it. <laughs> uh, Nathaniel Morgan on saxophone, um, Angela Morris behind our piano. She'll be playing a bit of sax as well. Jason Trammell uh, behind our drum kit. Taja Cheek playing the electric bass. And by the end of the set, everyone will have sung at some point or another. Um, so, Roberto, uh, this album, I mean, that song is a really good example of the sort of intimate, quiet nature of, of this record. Um, it seems, on the surface, not to be as kind of politically motivated as the last record, Private Energy. Is that, does that appearance deceive? I think so, but I think there's songs about things that that are really important to me in in, in respect to like political and social um, things that I care and want to talk about within my music. But also, there's songs on the record, like there's a, the second song is called "Imagining What to Do," and it's literally about that feeling of living in New York in the, during the winter time and like just feeling the cold and the snow and wanting to just be in bed and be under the covers. <laughs> I mean, that's what that it's, it's, that's what it's about. And I feel like if you don't live in New York, you really don't know what we're talking about. I think almost anybody who lives in a Northern climate okay. would know what that. <laughs> but for sure, I think New York is special because it's not like when you go out in the snow in New York, you're like, damn, I really don't want to be out here today. <laughs> you know, I think there's a specialness to the city. It's still the sa- It's always the same. It's just kind of like now there's snow on the ground. Well, but now there there are moments on the record, or at least one moment that I can think of off the top of my head that are not only New York centric but Brooklyn centric, because there's a piece that refers to that camper down elm. Yeah, the tree right. in Prospect Park. This really weird looking. Gnarly. Yeah. yeah, it's a gnarly one. Yeah, and that's uh, so. You know, it does seem like you're really kind of. It's almost like a musical diary in a sense. It, uh, it's exactly what it is, and and it was documenting like all these moments. Uh, during the past few years of where I was, where I was like thinking about these moments in Florida, thinking about these moments in New York, and and this kind of um that that's a really good example because that was just every morning before I would go record in Flatbush, I would wake up with with my wife. Her name's Christy. We would wake her up and, and wake her up, and I was like, let's go for a walk in the park. We live right in front of the park, and she's not a morning person, so it was, <laughs> it was rough. Sometimes it was like wrestling a bear, but it was ca- it was great in respect to just like seeing that morning and feeling that morning together and we would walk through that tunnel that was adjacent to 
that is adjacent to the that this gnarly tree that we speak of. Yeah. And um and and folks who don't know the tunnels in Prospect Park, I mean we're talking about they're above ground tunnels. They're just yeah. like overpasses. But they're really echoey. Yeah. And, and musicians are constantly in there playing. Yeah. It's it's it is. It's kind of like there's a lot of like sonic residue throughout where like you can pass through something and it feels like it's still attached in your brain some somewhere or somehow. Yeah. So New York, obviously, a, a big part of your life. Florida is where family is. But somehow North Carolina gets into the equation here as well. Yeah. Um, again, Christy was away doing some studies at, at a school in, in North Carolina called Penland for like three months. And so my friends, uh, that band Sylvanesso. Oh, sure. They let me use their, like I, ha- I was like house sitting and they let me use their studio. And so it was kind of like a musical boot camp again for me to be like, all right, I have all these ideas. Let me see how decent they are. And then I threw out mostly everything and then wrote a whole lot of new stuff. And it was mostly just about like, how can I learn to make decisions again? And yeah. that's what I was like trying to do again with songwriting. Well, with, uh, you know, Sylvanesso isn't just a band. They're part of a huge network of, of musicians down there in the Durham, North Carolina area. And they all seem to know each other and play with each other and didn't take long for you to tap into that, it seems. I've known those fellas. I've known them for a long time. And I know some of the fellas that work there. And, and I know I've known Nick and, and Amelia for a while. It's, I'm glad you brought that up. They live in something they call the bird sanctuary. And there's a lot of people, community that lives in this like little compound and so there's all these musicians that live there and so i was able to like talk to my friend jen wasner and from then her, the band y oak from the band and then her partner in the band um andy stack who played mm-hmm. uh steel drum so it was just like people were just coming over and just setting up and i was like oh let's do this let's try this and there was just like a lot of that happening as well yeah on the other hand you know with all the the good feeling and the intimacy and the family oriented or you know neighborhood oriented music making th- there are larger issues you know that that come into play sure and one of the the striking things about this record is how you can be listening to it and there's a kind of tension between the sound of the record this very you know welcoming very quiet sound and the occasional line that <laughs> pops up ab- above the surface and you, you're thinking, wow, that was dark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and that's like every day. I feel like not every day is good and not every moment you feel great. You know, you wake up and it's just like, damn, I don't feel good. And it's like every moment that you try to do to make that day feel better. Even if it's like the five minutes right before you fall asleep, you're like, oh, I feel great now that I'm laying down. Yeah. The day's over. And I think there's like a lot of that. On the record, I put... um uh, we print it on one side of the sleeve. It says, um, day is clear, night is here, I love you more. And, um, and it's kind of just like a mantra for me to just like get through every day. Uh. And like not, you know, like I said, every day is kind of rough sometimes and every day isn't kind of rough. Well, the, the song um, called uh, Please Won't Please has a line uh, which I- is really kind of startling about lighting yourself on fire just to see if someone will come and pick up the pieces afterwards <laughs> right uh, you know i haven't dug deep into that there's a lot of things in terms of like my identity that i've talked about you know there's a there's a moment in there where we're talking I, I i sing um brown won't go brown just glows and it's just you know this feeling of of this constant feeling of like violence towards like black and brown people right and and and, and other uh, marginalized folks i could say um but also there's all these moments that i read about uh i kind of like dive into like different stories and i haven't told this story at all to anyone so i'll tell it to you first and i can't remember the gentleman's name and that's that that kind of bums me out but um there was this fellow i think he was a priest or um a pastor of some sort and he was in texas i want to say and he ended up like self how do you say emulating emulating and um he was dedicating it as a protest in in reference to a lot of the monks who do that and he was just kind of he wrote this amazing just a lot of stuff that he was just talking about and and in terms of like what he was protesting why he was doing this and what he wanted to like what he was trying to help out in the town that he was in this town that was just like uh just that he felt like could be a better place you yeah, know with all yeah. the people that weren't doing such great things and i think um and i thought about that a lot how people can do that how they can just really do everything and anything that they can and if that's like the last resort and then sometimes like that's the last resort and people don't even see it, mm. you know, and that kind of being like, 
how do we like is it just like uh oversaturation of like these kinds of acts that or, or anything that people like what's like what's the craziest thing you can do and I, sometimes with with this music and with this album what i thought about the most is like how much like quiet music and um intimate music can be actually more um more aggressive and, and not not aggressive in the sense of but just more effective right in, in, in the sense of like getting into someone's mind and talking about things as opposed to using things that have been commodified like protest the music right right uh so I'm, I'm being told from the control room charles moore is the name of the guy i believe so i can't yeah. remember off the top of my head yeah uh you know d- died to inspire justice that was that was the idea that's the best way to put it yeah so um so the the album is called this is how you smile so it's basically almost like an instruction manual of how to get through the day it seems and it was inspired through this jamaica kincaid poem called girl which is a beautiful poem which is a list of instructions uh, and okay. she she's an amazing writer but it was just an, a, a poem and a list of instructions to, from a mother to a daughter explaining like how you're supposed to conform to society on this every day being she's from Antigua she's a black woman talking to her to her daughter and telling her like besides being a woman also like being in this colonized mm. uh island and just living with all these different things and she was saying like this is how you smile at people you don't like this is how you smile at people you like this is how you smile at someone you com- you like completely and I just it just really like resonated with me with like just kind of the way I was brought up as well just like how I had to like my mom was teaching me something in my house with within like their kind of like Ecuadorian culture the things that they brought over and then like going outside and being like oh shit this is different <laughs> this is weird you know it's <laughs> how things didn't really how things rubbed in weird ways yeah all right, well, let's, uh, let's hear the song, Please Won't Please. Uh, it's from the album called This Is How You Smile. Elado Negro and the band performing live here in the studio. Ocean on top of blue tide, an orange won't let go. Let me be, please won't please. Hush now, they can't know.
El Lado Negro, live here in our New York studio, and that song is called Please Won't Please, comes from the most recent album, This Is How You Smile. And Roberto, I want to come back to something you were saying just before you played that song, which was the idea that this kind of quiet music can get an idea across by insinuating it rather than kind of yelling it at you. And it seems like, you know, at a time where we're all shouting at each other, that that is, in its own way, a kind of a subversive approach that you've hit upon. For me, it, it wor- it's always worked for me like that. I've always been able to approach and have conversations with folks. Like, when I'm able to... when If I see somebody that's, like, frustrated or angry with something that I've done with them, I think it's like I step back and try to think about how can we slow this down and figure out where we can talk and have like real communication and I think that's the feeling that I'm trying to convey more than anything Mm. I don't think yelling there's nothing wrong with yelling I think some people just need to be yelled at sometimes (laughs) (laughs) and that's and I and I do yell and I don't I I think that that all all those forms are important it's just that's my way yeah well you know uh your your song young latin and proud it's not really yelling, but it's explicitly about, you know, gender, po- uh, uh, identity politics, you know, yeah. your, your identity as uh, a, a person of Ecuadorian heritage. Um, but even in that last song, in Please Won't Please, you know, the references to Brown Won't Go, as you said before, it's not as explicit, but the, the message is still there. So it's, you know, it, but it's coming in at a different channel, so to speak. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. So what is the writing process like for you? Do you start with words, music, it's guitar, piano? How did, what, yeah, what do you do? It's case to case. Yeah. And, and I, I, don't ha- I don't have any kind of musical background. Everybody in this room is like these beautifully musical beings that have so much musical knowledge in their brains and are like virtuosos. Are you, are you telling respect. me you've been faking it for 10 years? Absolutely. <laughs> I, almost every day I wake up and I'm like, wow, this is crazy. And um, uh, so, so when I'm writing music or making music, I don't have any of that vocabulary. I don't have that kind of, um, I haven't established that vernacular. They've, uh, these folks have actually helped me learn a lot of things in that respect. But I've known it, you know, I think you know music. You don't need to like go to school to learn it. So anyone definitely can make music um so when i'm writing i'm just putting sounds together i've sculpted sounds put sounds together and they're sample based a lot of times like i'll record people and use them as like in terms of like how i would use a sample and put it together and assemble it so there's like phonetic moments where i'm like singing something and i'm like well that sounds like this word in spanish or in english and then a theme kind of surfaces through those moments and then just kind of seeking out sounds that make sense and finding instruments like on this record i was happenstance was andy played uh steel um, steel pan that's andy from y oak and that was like yeah. he was like oh yeah i haven't played in a long time you know yeah, it's like yeah. one of those, and he's like some steel pan he's like you know, virtual <laughs> so i was like oh yeah you haven't played in a long time first take i was like that's great well <laughs> but um just stuff like that it's more about um theoretical things that happen in my mind and I'm like well that's a cool sound but maybe I can just take it and turn it into something completely different well there are a couple of tracks on the record which are just sounds you yeah. know they're like musique concrète you know they're except they I'm sure you're not using tape it's not probably using, all digital right but it's inspired in that theme for sure so uh, what function do those tracks serve a lot of different things there's um they they serve as like a this is the worst way to put it but as like a palate cleanser in uh-huh. a sense of like uh-huh. a sonic I need rest from when I'm listening to music I maybe listen to one song or two songs at a time and then I'm like I need something that has nothing to do with songs and it gives me that opportunity to explore environments that I was already in or in during that time that I was like recording where I'm listening back to the mixes and I'm walking in mm-hmm. an environment and I'm hearing all this stuff and that's happened a lot and some of them are gathered recordings I would text like a bunch of random friends I'm like hey send me a minute of where you're at right now. And so they would turn on their iPhone and just record something and send it to me. And so a lot of those collage pieces are those moments of friends of where they were in, in, in a moment. So there's kids, you know, uh, you can hear little kids, you can hear like some kind of like rallies. Jay, there's, a, there's a moment where Jay was just getting married. It was like everybody was <laughs> celebrating and they had, they had just kissed each other and it was kind of like this really cool moment. And, that's, um, that's Jason there behind the drums. And, the, and uh, there's uh, 
this I would always walk walking in front of the courthouse in downtown Brooklyn and there was um this ice protest that was uh-huh. happening that had just finished the march across Brooklyn and it was it was a beautiful moment it was pretty emotional and just just recording that moment it, there's all these little layers yeah. and, and I enjoy those layers and I want to know about those layers as well yeah and so Sufjan Stevens sends you like a minute of him noodling around the piano yeah I don't even know what he, he sent me some kind of it was funny I was like yeah send me something and then it was like a, it was like as if I think he like played piano to a cassette tape and then pl- was like pressing and stopping and playing the, <laughs> the cassette tape all right and that worked in this beautiful way where I was like working on a piece and I put that right at the end of that piece and then it was a it was the perfect progression to segue mm-hmm. into the next song well, the, uh, the, the album is called This Is How You Smile by Elado Negro. And uh, the piece you're going to play for us next called uh, Pais Nublado. Again, th- this, this seems to be, uh, the, the title translates as Cloudy Country, right? Or Country. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Cloudy that's Country. That's a good way to say it. Yeah. So is this, um, is this you kind of claiming this country as your own? definitely but it's also um there's 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 an ambiguity there's ambiguity with this all i think for sure it's a country where we're at right now the country that we're at right now my country i guess you know the, the united states but also it could be any country as well it can be a lot of different places and even the country of your mind you know mm. i think there's like that feeling for me there's there's a lot of those kind of like surrealistic aspects in in the work that i put and make well let's hear the song pais nublado is the name of it uh, a bilingual song is sung in both spanish and english and uh, once again elado negro performing live Thank you. 
país nublado, este país nublado. Para pasear este país nublado, este país nublado. The song is called Pais Nublado, Cloudy Country, and it's a live performance by Elado Negro here in our New York studio. The band is uh, touring around with, uh, with Beirut for a while, and then you guys will be doing some headlining gigs of your own back here in New York at Elsewhere in Brooklyn on Tuesday night, June 18th. It'll be... Uh, Presumably warmer by then. Presumably. Who knows, right? And you'll be up on the roof, is that right? I think so. That's what they said. We'll see. We'll make sure. Okay. (laughs) Well, June 18th, (laughs) indoors or out at elsewhere. Um, So, Roberto, when you you write a line like, you know, we'll take our turn, we'll take our time, knowing that we'll be here long after you, for all the ambiguity that there is in your songwriting... In this day and age, people are going to th- think they know who the you in that sense is. Sure. <laughs> I mean, and if, and if you think it's you, then maybe it is you, you know? <laughs> I mean, maybe you have something to think about if, if you do think it's you. Yeah. I, think that's, I think that's the important aspect of the ambiguity, you know? I think not all things have to be so... It's not that you shouldn't be explicit, but I think... And we all have our insecurities, but if there's things in your life that you have to question, you're like, okay, maybe, yeah, maybe if I'm thinking, if I'm feel, def- if I feel defensive about this, then maybe there is something wrong, yeah. you know. And I think that's a, the best way I think people could think about it. Well, that was a, a really wonderful arrangement uh, that you guys just played. So, you know, for a guy who's telling us that he, you know, doesn't have a whole lot of musical training and stuff like that, you have won just recently a fellowship that yeah. usually goes to composers like Steve Reich and Philip Glass when they were much younger. So people are hearing something. And and I appreciate that. And I think that's, that says a lot about them more than anything. Um, What's the name of the fellowship? There's, there's two things I want. <laughs> <laughs> I want a United States Artist Fellow in Music and then also uh, an artist grant for the Foundation for Contemporary Arts. Right. The Foundation for Contemporary Arts is in New York City and the United States Artist uh, is in Chicago. And yeah, what were you? What was the question? That's what I want. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> he said sheepishly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it, more than anything, there's. It, it's like I was saying. It says a lot about them. They're doing the work that these institutions should be doing, which is looking at what people are working on now, not yeah. looking at what's going to help their brand, but looking and supporting at artists who don't come from these traditional backgrounds that are like. Mm. that that come from these resources that some people like have all these resources are born into like all this stuff and 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 in a lot of respects privilege and some people aren't yeah but they just they they kind of come to and i was lucky to figure things out and Mm. have people around me who helped me figure things out well it's been 10 years since the first elado negro record right yeah yeah well the latest is called this is how you smile Uh, This is normally the point where I hold up for the camera an LP or a CD, but they're all sold out, so I'm holding up the bumper (laughs) sticker. (laughs) Roberto, congratulations, and thank you you for bringing the band in. sounded great. Thank you to them. They're amazing. Wonderful job, guys. Elado Negro on Soundcheck. Yeah. 